standing in the uh, Rainforest of the World exhibit at the California Academy of Sciences, which is an exhibit we've just created where we'll bring several rainforest habitats from all around the world together in one place. Well, this habitat that we're in is, is a big greenhouse, if you will, inside the California Academy of Sciences in Golden Gate Park, and it's divided vertically in half, one half being uh, devoted to New World rainforest, Central and South America. The other vertical half of the rainforest is four galleries where we look at the rainforests of the Amazon, Madagascar, Borneo, and Costa Rica. And so you come into this exhibit and you get a real flavor for what rainforests are like all around the world. Plants, animals, butterflies, birds, snakes, fishes, reptiles. So it's sort of a snapshot in one place. When you think of rainforests, you think of heat, humidity, and plants, and trees. And so those are the things that are the main challenges, if you will. And so what we did was set up a system here with uh, natural daylight, artificial light, humidity, and temperature control that we can create the conditions of a real rainforest here in San Francisco. We have a pretty elaborate um, HVAC system on here and a misting system you can see going off behind me. And so those are all controlled by a building management system where we're monitoring uh, light levels, humidity, and temperature and controlling them to the point that we want them. And so what we've done here is we've tried to create the sort of essence of rainforest where we're bringing real plants, some fabricated trees, some real animals, birds, butterflies, and so on, and mixing all these things up and creating what is a, an essence of rainforest. The, the pool here in the forest is actually as bigger than it seems. It's about 100,000 gallons, uh, and it's about probably 10 feet deep. There's a tunnel through the middle of it. And so we've chosen the species of fish that will live in that size and shape pool and will live with each other, hopefully without eating too many of each other. But it's always a challenge from time to time because we have a lot of big predatory fish. And sometimes the big predatory fish eat the smaller non-predatory fishes. Uh, but you have to manage that by choosing them and choosing fishes the right size and keeping the big fish really well fed. The secret when you create a habitat like this is really doing your homework to begin with. So if you avoid making a lot of dumb mistakes early, you come up with a plan that, that you've researched and that works. And so I think here we chose a system where we could create conditions that suited the animals and plants we've chosen, and we sort of uh, adhere to that plan, and now you see the result of it where it's all coming together. And so I think it's, it's not a very ha ad hoc process where you just bring a collection of animals and plants together and see what happens. You have to really research it, talk to others that have done it, and then formulate a plan and then do your best to, to follow the plan. And we've been, I think we had a good plan because things are really working out very well for us here.